Hello, Gophers! So, there will not be any kind of intro for this podcast. So, basically, we are September 30th, uh, today, 30, and it's the International Podcast Day, apparently, and uh, my podcast, Oster, which is uh, Transistor.fm, is doing some kind of... Uh, a uh, special day today, so I mean, uh, every every one of their clients that is posting an episode today might uh, have the chance to win a Sure SB7 uh, mic, which which I would uh, would love to uh, to get. So hopefully, uh, uh, yeah, I will be the the lucky one or whatever. But, uh, you know, this is not what we will be talking uh, today. So you might have listened to the last episode where I received the maintainer and the main uh, one of the main uh, contributor of the temple uh, tooling library. And uh, af- after after this talk, I was extremely pumped and I'm currently building a software as a service called Kiwi Polis. Uh, basically, it's uh, well, we we have pivoted uh, last week, basically. But uh, I mean, it's it's targeted now at a homeschooler and it's a planner. There's there's a, a huge twist in there where there's a 2D uh, game where the kids can uh, do their activities and whatnot with with small serious game. But uh, suffice to say that. The UI that I have at the moment was well. It it's built on the you know the, the standard HTML templates. Uh, I have created my my own small helper library called TPL just to add some kind of structure and some parsing to uh, to the mix, just to make it a little bit easier to uh, you know to to have some partials and reusable you know, quote-unquote component, even though they are not really component. But let's just say if you have used uh, Ugo in the past for static site generation, then it, you know, it's a little bit similar where you can have some some partial here and there in your views or in your pages. So I was extremely interested to see if I could start transitioning to Temple because I... To be frank, after after the the, the conf- uh, after the conference, after the the podcast episode, I was kind of you know very interested to see if well, first of all, if if the tooling would work with my screen reader. So that was one aspect that I was not sure about, because if you are not aware. Um, yeah, basically, basically, you you're not really writing HTML, or at least you are not really in a quote unquote HTML, uh, the language server, or at least maybe the I'm using VS Code. And from what I understood from the interview, uh, it seems like the you know Vim user might have a better experience than the VS Code user because in uh, in Vim and NeoVim, you can have uh, you can have you know multiple language server for a specific file type or, or something like that and uh, it's difficult uh, it's difficult to do or impossible to do with vs code so I, I was curious to see well first is this thing is going to to be working with how I'm working with HTML because when you're blind and I don't want to repeat myself too much but basically when when you're blind and you're working with HTML it's uh, it's non-trivial to move part of your document strun- structure here and there. So I'm using the, 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 you know, the collapsible feature of VS Code a lot. Not to hide anything, but just, let's say, let's say I, I have, I don't know, three, uh, three div container horizontally, and I want to move the middle one into the left one. So one easy way for me to do that would be to collapse the left one after that collapse the center one and just you know cut the middle one and paste that just before the the left one so when they are collapsed first of all there there's there's audio there's audio sound in in vs code that tells me that you are you are in in a in a container that is that is collapsed and it's it's doing the same so i'm i'm, I'm not using uh, collapsible uh you know, feature uh, like 
like they are supposed to be to be used i guess it's you know for me it's just to prevent the screen reader from uh from having to traverse a lot of development because as you might expect when you have a screen reader everything is read to you so it's pretty difficult to um to know especially in an html file well where you are exactly so that part worked you know decently well uh, i must uh, i must admit um, what I mean by decently well, I, I did not add have many problem. Uh, it seems like the HTML edition, or I mean, the way that you write HTML in the temple file, seems to be you know it seems to be pretty pretty similar to what I am having when editing, you know, quote unquote normal HTML file, for example. So. So that that uh, that part works for me. So the the setup aspect was extremely quick. Um, the, the second the second you know piece of concerns that I was having was you know is is it is it going to be straightforward to uh, you know to have an intermediate uh, steps in between having my HTML that now needs to uh you know it needs to kind of compile to some go code and now the language server uh or at least yeah the, the language server is supposed to give you some kind of richer experience when you are accessing the data that you are receiving so for me it, it did not work uh so that was the first the f you know the first thing that i i was I was finding it uh, a little bit, uh, you know, sad if I can say that, for lack of a better word. I, I don't, I don't know what to say exactly, but I, I, w I was kind of uh, a little bit disappointed about that. So to me, maybe it's my, uh, maybe it's it's my slow computer. I do have, I, I do have a, a very old machine, and and I know that screen reader is eating a lot of of resources and whatnot. I have like sixteen gig of RAM. But uh, the processor are not great at all. So, so to me, I, w I was I was you know inside a, c a component in in Temple, and I, I was not having any kind of suggestion. Let's say let's say we are receiving a struct, like a, I don't know a user struct or whatever, and you have a a name field and an email field. So I was not I was not having anything there um, during you know when I was writing my uh, my markup so that was a downside and I was like well okay you know well, that's not a huge thing as long as I, I guess there there will be some some compilation error at some point that that will tell me you know you have you have tried to use a field that is not uh, written correctly or things like that um, so I started to move my 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 pages and and my not not my component like like I was saying uh, in in my in my library TPL I I do have a underscore par partials directory where it's it's just a bunch of small HTML snippet that are just available to all of the the pages so so let's say let's say we are building a dashboard um so you can have something like i don't know a a user a, a user uh, snippet let's say it's called user.html and this thing will print the avatar of the current user and their names and maybe a drop down menu for uh, well, maybe not a drop down menu but let's say let's say we have a lot of places in our application where we will have a, a user display like that with their uh, avatar and their name so so basically that that is the kind of component that i was expecting to 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 be building so i started to to move um you know to move my html around and was i was simply doing you know mostly uh you know in in html templates i have i have a, a define uh, directive at the top let's say defined uh, quote unquote user and inside that i have a small small piece of html uh that just displayed the avatar and, and the name so eh, i just copied the html in there and now um 
was was also creating the pages uh and i was i was having let's say let's say the the main the main root uh the root component with uh with the dashboard uh, page and and a couple of components and i started to to uh to get a, a lot of problem uh from the the temple compiler um so I, 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 at first I was like, good, this is, you know, this is interesting, this is nice, so maybe there's, there's some form of formatting things, or th maybe there's some just straight all e uh, errors in my HTML, you know, it's possible. Uh, so I started to, to try and, and see, you know, what was those errors, and, uh, you know, the, 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 the error line that, that was... Uh, that was sending me the the compiler was was like a directly a slash a for example or slash div uh the error was extremely difficult to understand uh you know m extremely vague like uh, uh non-empty node or something like that I, uh, uh not not non-empty node it, it was not uh, you know i i don't recall exactly it was it was not the uh because you you need to terminate your uh, let's say you have a, a br for example or uh, or an image tag so you need to you need to terminate them them with a slash but I already already always do that mostly so I was having a lot of formatting issue I think from what I would say my partial and my pages to to the temple view maybe it's because. Um, and that that would probably sounds extremely crazy to to a lot of you, but I am using tabs in HTML. Uh, I'm 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 always using tab as much as much as I can for indentation. So is it is it that that caused an issue because their uh, their compiler is expecting uh, I don't know spaces and whatnot. Um, I'm also I'm also using pre uh, pretty fire uh, to. You know, automatically format my HTML, uh, you know, pages and, and things like that, and uh, it was kind of lost uh, from from the temple uh, point of view as well. So I mean, I, I was yes. So to me, this is this is where this is where things yeah. started to uh, to not work for my situation. So that being said, um. I, I, I if if I think if I had started with Temple from the beginning and try to you know go with the the compiler as as quickly as possible uh, fixing issues uh, as you are typing or as you are creating your new component I think that would have been easy versus trying to migrate what I have at the moment and just copy pasting, you know, what I would consider valid HTML to, uh, to temple, because at the end of the day, I, I was, I was mainly, you know, replacing the range, uh, directive with four, the, if, you know, with, with good old, uh, if, uh, statement and, and, uh, you know, ca calling the data itself, just, uh, just using the, uh, the brace, the temple brace, uh, having the field in there so yes um I, I i think i think if i had started from the beginning so might 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 be a choice uh i i even i i even considered it a couple of uh months ago i, I think i started this project like three or four months ago three months um it was on, it was on the table um but yes i think uh i I, I have to I have to say that the the amount of of time that it seems to be taken uh, for for the compilation or at least to get the proper error uh, seems to seems to be uh, to be a little bit uh, too long for me at least I I can sense it I feel I feel that there's there is something there and. Uh, and yes, uh, so that that brought me to to the idea of you know maybe at the stage where I am with with my library maybe it might be an in, an interesting uh, 
idea to investigate if I could uh, include some static analysis in there. And I started to to play with that a little bit. But be, before, you know, before I go there, um, so I, I'm not I'm not saying at all that that the uh, temple is is you know it, it's good it's really really nice and to be frank I would have really enjoy if it if it if it would have worked for me but again I mean it I'm I'm just one person and it's, it's it might be extremely localized to my situation maybe uh, uh, yeah I don't know I don't know exactly but but yes it's uh it's interesting. Uh, I, I have searched a lot and it seems to, it seems to, you know, it seems to be a common, common problem. So uh, there, there's a couple of people, uh, there, there's some people that also have this, uh, the, you know, some issues with, and I, it's totally understandable. I mean, it's, it's kind of, kind of huge and crazy, uh, what, uh, what they are trying to do. And, uh, if I were to restart a project today I'm, I'm i might i might be tempted to to try it from scratch so uh, i i would be extremely interested to see if my experience would be different going from you know just starting with temple directly i i i kind of imagine that it would it would be a little bit smoother and probably probably you know easier uh, compared to what uh, what I was trying to do, which is like convert, converting uh, converting a lot of, a lot of things, and especially if if the formatting is is not is not done properly, now the error message is extremely misleading. So I mean, it it was uh, yeah, it was difficult. So so yes, it it led me to to start thinking about my my small library which i you know I, i'm building it for myself to be frank uh, i'm not not really ex expecting that uh to uh to be extremely popular uh, that being said if i am able to complete this static analysis part uh might you know it might start to uh to be a little bit more interesting maybe for for others so what i'm what i'm thinking at the moment what i what i do have at the at this time is that since the library is already parsing all of the html you know pieces that that an application have um so again if we uh if we do a small detour back to 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 tpl uh, it kind of forces you to have a directory structure for your your templates um, with kind of layout pages and views. So those are the two main uh, building block of, of of this. So you you have a couple of layout pages. Let's say let's say we have a a public facing layout pages called layout.html, and we have an app.html when the users are signed in for example so from there you will have some views inside a subdirectory called layout and, a, and some views inside a subdirectory called app so i'm i'm already i'm you know i'm already parsing everything there so i was able to uh to start playing with the uh you know the ast so we we do have we do have access to the ast directly when we are parsing templates um so that was extremely interesting to me i i did not knew that uh on runtime we we were uh, able to access that um so what i did is that for now i'm kind of extracting all the fields that are uh, used in all the pipelines so all the directive in in a in a html page um uh, and I'm storing that into a file. <laughs> yeah, I I know it's it, it's you know bear with me for for one second. It's it's just a it's just an idea at the moment. So when are those templates are created? So at the end, at the beginning of your when your application is is starting, you are forced to parse your template. So you call a function called tpl.parse. So this is already like that in my library. So at this moment, I'm able to capture all the fields that are used in a, a specific template or a partial page. So if we if we recall, 
uh, in TPL, you have views. Let's say we are in the dashboard. So you, you might have a dashboard.html inside a app directory. And we have our underscore partials directory, which will, you know, will have all the, the small pieces that you want to, um, to share across all your views. So my, I'm able to, you know, to extract all the fields. So let's say, let's say our, our dashboard is receiving, I don't know, some kind of, some kind of structure, whatever, the, the, call it the dashboard data. This is a struct that have uh, a list of to do's, uh, whatever. So I'm, I'm now able to, to capture, you know, all, all the usage of that, that structure. And it's possible to do that. If you compare t t p what TPL is doing compared to the HTML package, it's that it's wrapping the data that you want to send to your views. It's wrapping that into its own uh, structure. So this structure is already having like the current user, the XSRF token, for example. There, there, there's a couple of things that are just re reused on, on, you know, mostly all all the the html views that I've, I've i've seen in my career so far so basically that i i wanted something that encapsulated I, yes again the the language of the user the current user the uh there's a data field which you know, the data field is is what you would want to send to your views itself but there's a couple of other you know fields in that in that struct so first of all, the you know this structure is known. This is this is a defined type, uh, and and it's pretty easy to uh, to to do some static analysis because now I know that all of the pages and the partials, well, not the partial, sorry, but all the, all the views at least will receive this you know this wrap uh, structure. So it's pretty easy to to do some static analysis for for that. Now the the data. So the, there's there's two fields uh, in TPL on on that structure that you can you can send some custom data. Well, first of all, well, no, yeah, there's three. So the current user is 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 a, is an interface. The data field is an interface, and and there's a, an extra as well. So <laughs> I mean. Uh, again, th this is my library. I mean, uh, yeah, th this this is what I was ne needing. Uh, I find myself that sometimes I want to uh, to pass something more than just the structure that that the views is expecting. So, if we were to build a an e-commerce website, for example, you might want to pass a product in the product page, but in the extra, you might want to pass the store. The current store of, of of you know of this particular particular store where there is the 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 main menu the categories and and a lot of information so i mean yeah so again returning to this idea that tpl is already parsing all this thing already knowing all the fields that that is used so what i needed to uh to connect the dot at this point was how can i you know, how can I parse all those fields or at least how, how can I store those fields and now have some kind of process or small, a small, you know, small CLI that might, that might be watching some files that could, that could just run the static analysis, uh, when, when, you know, files are changing or at least when you, this, when, when this file that contains all the combination of views and uh, the fields that are used in that field uh, are, 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 you know, when this file change. Um, so again, I use the, the go slash parse. So, so, so go have, uh, you know, it's, it's all built in. There, there's a package, there's a package to access some e AST um, and kind of browse the, the you know I, I i i could i could have some package uh sent to uh to an, an input of a cli and just uh you know just fetch that package for exported fields and whatnot and compare that to the the file that was generated so i mean let me rephrase that 
So when we are parsing the template, when TPL is, is parsing the template, it saves a file. So let's say, let's imagine just a kind of a key value file where the key is the name of the template and, and the value would be like a, a, a slice of string that just contains all the, the data or all the fields that are used in that template. And now the, uh, the CLI is able to, to take that with, without even touching the, uh, the template itself and without even having to know anything about the template because that part is done. Now it's able to say, okay, you know, we have those templates. Those templates are using those fields. Now am I able to inspect the the AST of, of the go of the go package uh, that that is passed to to uh, to the command line and see if there is something uh, that is wrong just a typo there so that my, my goal at this point is just to start detecting you know what you have used that emails and the there's no field in in the user struct called emails. So now, how would the you know the static analyzer knows about the type? Well, at first I wanted to to use the comment system of the templates. So that that was my idea. I, I wanted to to just add a comment in uh, you know on, on the top of each views, and uh, maybe use a an old uh, an old uh, razor view uh, syntax where where they, they they are using a NAT symbol. And uh, they have the, the word model. Uh, I would, you know, I was going to use a couple of uh, different things, but just having some uh, uh, some comment that uh, explain, you know, this views is going to receive a user, for example, the user being a struct um, accessible uh, in 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 the package itself. Uh, unfortunately, the AST that is that is received. Um, when you are using the HTML template uh, parse, uh, the comments are just omitted from the ASD. So I, I did not add access to that. So I said, well, strangely enough, and since they, this is my package, <laughs> I could do anything. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm already, you know, I'm already having a funk map, and you might, you might already know what, where I'm going with that. But I'm already having a funk map where I have the, uh, you know, all the functions for translation and a couple of uh, uh, internalization functions for dates and currencies and whatnot. So I mean, I said, you know what? Let's have a TPL type function there, which, which just accept a you know a type in string uh and returns nothing and this is how i'm now able to specify you know what this views is receiving a user for example or this view and and this function is uh, accept uh uh that you know it's a variadic uh argument so it 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 accepts the type for the data the current user and also the extra fields of the wrapped structure so now the crazy part is that i am now able to ensure that if a field is used in either of those three things now i you know uh for, from an external cli i know that okay you know this the the the, the dot data is supposed to be a user it uh, at this moment they are calling a dot emails and that does not exist in the user so i'm i'm kind of very very close to be able to uh to write that down uh from the cli to just say you know what you you have an error you are using an emails i i unfortunately i am losing the line number and whatnot uh at this time again th this this is all just a, a huge huge quick prototype but uh i don't know it feels uh it feels interesting uh, at least and of course yes uh yes it's it's a little bit strange that it's it's kind of needing an intermediate uh 
you know, files in between the parsing of the templates and, and the static analysis. But there's a good reason for that. Uh, there's a lot going on when people are parsing their uh, their templates and one aspect is that they can they can also pass a funk map as well to just happen uh, what they want as functions so I would not have access to that from the static analysis CLI um, so that's that's mainly why the parsing is not done there because if if the parsing would have been done in the CLI I would have been able to specify you know what you will you will include the comments as well in in your ASD you know a template please give me the comments uh, but yes at this moment and it's you know it's totally invisible so the way that you are doing that and I'm I'm, I'm going you know again <laughs> this is my library this is this is just me trying to find a good good way for me to build my SAS but but I mean if this works, maybe maybe it it will be useful to to others. I don't know. So there's a config that can be passed to the to the TPL, and now there's 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 two there's two fields. First of all, there's one called enable static analysis. It's a boolean, and the second one is that where do you want this file to be uh, to be saved. So I imagine myself doing. I already have some kind of. Uh, you know, app environment, uh, you know, the stage. So when I'm in development, I will be generating that file, which, uh, by the way, uh, it's it's negligible. It's 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 I, I don't even know, but it's 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 just it's just taking the AST and and just uh, basically um, encoding that and writing that to uh, to a file. Um, and and the ana the analysis tool will will be a separate uh, TPL. Uh, it will it will be called TPL. It will be a CLI, very 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 you know quick and dirty CLI that just have two uh, two function, well at least two argument or two command. Let's say let's call that a command. So it will there will be the init which will generate all the 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 directory structure for for the library to work correctly and uh, there there will be this uh, this analyzer uh, command or whatever the name which will want to accept the file that that was generated when parsing the template and also the root package for where it should start to look at you know it will try to find the the structure itself and uh and yeah i mean uh, this is uh this is what i i am i'm working on at the moment i'm having a little bit of fun it's not like i'm uh i'm you know i'm not working on that 40 hours a week of course i'm uh, i'm building a sas so but i can see myself having a decent uh a, 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 because at, at the end of the day, to me, the HTML uh, template, what what is what I miss from from that, to be frank, myself only is those small errors that I'm doing sometimes when I'm using a a field. So let's say let's say there there's a I don't know there's a struct that gets uh, refactored and, and there's some fields that change. Uh, you will only see those those errors in uh, in runtime. So now if I have this uh, static analysis tool working and, and it's able to find that in development, uh, I mean, yeah, that, that's, still, that's still pretty pretty decent. I have started a branch uh, called, uh, well, I guess it's called static analysis, I don't know, on, on the TPL uh, repository. If you are interested, in, uh, interested to see what it looks like, if you want to, uh, to jump as well, if you want to contribute, I mean, I'm... I'm Def uh, definitely not uh, not an expert in all of that uh, that thing, but but seems to be uh, it's, it seems to be possible to be uh, to be able to do that. Uh, is it going to to uh, to capture all the issues? Not at all. I mean, I I'm, I'm not even sure if it, if it if it will work. But uh, but just by by being able uh, being able to type the you know quote unquote type well, it's it's not it's not real type but it's it's just saying that you know what this interface that this views is receiving it should be i don't know a to-do list or it should be whatever xyz uh, structure 
and uh, and from there i mean uh, it should be uh, should be possible to do again this is uh you know this this is interesting and i've i've you know i've been having some some fun doing that with uh, some tests and um it's nice sometimes to build something else than uh, a web server and go to be to be completely frank uh i find myself being in a in a position where you know 80 85 percent of what i'm building well maybe 80 percent is mostly web-based web backend related stuff um you know so yes it's uh it's interesting sometimes to just uh not be a web backend developer and 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 put a put a, another hat that just say you know what i i will build this tool for me and and see uh, first of all see if i can do that and second of all maybe there will be some uh, some interest uh, at some point i don't know but again it was fun so go is uh extremely nice i still love it even after uh, 10 years plus and uh yeah, if you want to uh, to reach out, if you want to come to this podcast as a guest, I mean, I would be extremely happy to to talk to you. If you have an open uh, open source project, if you have something uh, that you want to talk about, just uh, you know, just reach out to me. The best way is probably via you know Twitter at the moment. But uh, but yeah, on that, have a great week. Bye.